Hey, hey, it's good friend Tom again, and hey, welcome to video number two in our coaching series that uh, I think you dig it. Remember the first one? You just you must have just watched it, right? If you didn't, I think I put it still up top so you can go back and look at it if you want to. That's all about the adventure traveler, man. Stay close to that because we're going to take a little bit of that and put it here into number two. So now we're going to be talking about VSM rejection to referrals. All right, what, what that means is how is it that you live through rejection and ultimately get the referrals to pour in? And I'm telling you, you can do it. All right? I get between 25 and 45 referrals every single month. But I'm telling you, you can start doing it immediately. And I think that's why you tune into these, right? Is that you don't want to say, okay, Tom, I'm going to learn something a year from now. You go, I really have a need. I really want to get something right now, and I really want to learn something. Because I get it. That's what I've always wanted, too. That's what I've done. You know, I've always wanted to... Make sure that I found some type of training stuff that I go, what can I take right now and put it into my career today and make it work? All right, that's really important, and I think that's what you're looking for, so that's what I want to make sure I deliver to you today. Fair enough? All right, here we go. And i got to tell you, I can't stand like the typical old trainer guru types and all that stuff where they want to tell you all the stuff that you have to do, otherwise you're wrong and all that stuff, yet they give you these little two or three or four minute quibbles that really don't tell you much. And uh, mostly these are from guys that haven't sold cars in 20 or 30 years, man. I don't want to learn from guys that haven't sold cars in 20 or 30 years. I can learn something, but it isn't how to do this, all right? All right, so anyway, today, let's take a look at their whole rejection side, and then we'll get to the referral side of this. First off, rejection. Let me tell you why rejection comes up so you get it, so you can avoid it forever. All right? First off, most trainers and gurus and managers and stuff like that that train you, they don't really do much training of it, but they just tell you how to get referrals. Most of the time they say, okay, when somebody buys a car, client buys a car, that's when they're at their hottest moment most excited, most gratified moment. And they'll tell you, all right, so somewhere between this moment right here and delivery, there's a gap, there's a gap of time, right? So what they want you to do, all kinds of stuff, they want you to do walkthroughs through the service department and uh, you know, go over warranty books or whatever it is, all that stuff in the middle of it and then they also want you to ask for referrals if they even ask you to ask for referrals. But they should because the majority of your time between here and here needs to be spent on building contacts and building this, this relationship that you've already built because they bought from you so they have some level of trust and loyalty with you. You want to spend this middle part getting as many contacts as you possibly can so that you can build your career in an even bigger way, much faster, much more expedient. Because you don't want this, you don't want to build this thing for 10 years and find out you couldn't build it, do you? Don't you want to build it right away? That's why I'm going through this. All right. So all this time between the time they buy and the time they actually pick up the vehicle, I want you to spend doing that. Now, here's the problem that happens. All right. Is that if and or when you're told to get referrals, what you're told to do is you just ask for them. They'll just go, Tom, just ask for them. Just get in there and say, hi, folks, can I have some referrals? You know, I, I, and I want to be able to share uh, what I've done to, uh, with you and you buying yours with some other people so you know anybody who's looking to buy a car now or sometime in the next year or so. I mean, that's what they tell you to do. Trainers do that. Right? One of the trainers out there just says, can you give me some, some referrals? Anybody who might buy a car now or in the next two years, next three years, next five years, next ten years? All right. That's weak. It's not going to really work the way that you need that to, to really get the huge numbers. And I'm going to tell you how in just a second. All right, so, but to tell you to do that, but this is what happens. You end up going in, you end up going up to your client, and you say, uh, all right, folks, now, by the way, um, if you know of anybody who's looking for a car, and uh, and you think I might be able to help them out, if you could send them, send them my way, I'd really appreciate it. It's how I build my career. So if you could do that for me, I'd really appreciate it. And your clients say, sure, we'll do that. And by the way, do they? No, they don't, right? So you get a rare one now and then. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about all these people that you're in contact with, that you've built these great relationships with, they're not referring people to you. A few do. That's it, just a few little onesies, Tuesdays, onesies and Tuesdays. Are you getting 25 to 45 a month? 
No, you're not. Most of the time, what do you get? I don't know, three or four or something like that. They end up in one or two sales or something like that. You don't want that. That's not going to build your career. All right, so you got to find a way to get in there. But what your bosses and all and the managers and the trainers, what they're telling you is wrong. All right, and then what they tell you to do is they go, I tell you what, because this is what happened over time. They go, let's start giving them money. All right, so now you say, hey, folks, if you're looking for anyone who's buying a car, if you could let them know, uh, I'll take really good care of them. By the way, whenever you send someone to me and they they end up buying, I'll send you $100. <laughs> that doesn't work either because... Because just think, I, want, I want you to think this through. Are you really thinking that people will sell off their friends and their workers and their bosses and all that stuff for a hundred bucks? No way, because they'll have to live it down. If you don't do the job right, they'll have to live with that misery for the next ten years. They don't want to do that. They no longer trust you because you haven't done anything to build the trust because you just lost it. You just became the person they didn't want you to be. And you're, and you're imposing on them. It's true, and that's why they reject you. Huh? See? That's how we get to rejection. And here's the real, you know, pain on this whole thing. They reject you by just never sending anybody. They don't tell you they won't give you their names and stuff. What do they do? They just go, yeah, yeah, I, I'll do it, and I'll think of some guys and tell you. And what happens? They don't ever do anything, so you know that rejection's alive. And then it hurts even worse for you. Because you go, oh my God, I've pissed people off, and you know what? They're not even telling me. They just hate me, and they'll ne they're never sending anybody to me. You see the problem? So I want you to eliminate that forever. None of that's ever going to matter. So now we got to take this rejection and have it really equal referrals. All right? Because here's the real secret that I wanted to let you in on for me. 25 to 45 referrals that I get every single month, I never even ask for one referral. I don't. I teach people how to do different things, but I never, never ask for even one referral. Is that what I do is I ask for contacts. Now, you might think right now I just used a different word. I slipped in a different word for referrals. That's absolutely not true. Because, see, this is what I believe. If you ask for a referral, it means you're asking for someone who's looking to buy a car right now. If I'm asking for a contact, that means I'm asking for somebody who's of interest, who might be of interest to me, where we could get along, maybe we could build a friendship or a partnership or something. It's a much bigger scope for people, and it takes a lot more intimacy in the conversation. So let me tell you how I do it and how to make this work for yourself. So here we go. Get your pencil out, because this is how I do it. All right, remember, this is where we're looking, and we're looking for contacts. And the only final note I want to make on this is because this is what you must understand. Your job is not to go get referrals, but to find the people buying. It's an impossible job. Your job is to go find the contacts who will then lead you to the people that are buying. You see? Because this is what you want to do. I'm going to just draw it out here and then I'm going to get to it. Here's you. If you're just looking for buyers out there, buyers are less than 3% of the public. So you'll go through 100 people looking for three, hoping that the three will want to buy something from you because of the products and services that you offer. And by the way, sometimes that's not likely because there's so many different products out there and you might not have it. So that's a long run, right? But I'm telling you this. If it's you looking for the buyers, let's say these are the buyers out there, you don't know where they are. You're looking for them, but you can't find them. It's tough. What I'm telling you is, you've got to pick up the contacts, the contacts of the people that know the buyers. I don't even care if these people are buying or not. I don't, right? But I make great relationships with all these people right here. To this guy, to this guy, to this guy. I make, why? Because all these people, guess what? Out of these people and all the people they know, they know all these people. That's how I end up getting the referrals who are the buyers, okay? So we're looking for, it looks like a cupcake or a, so, anyway, I don't know, it looks like a carousel or something. Anyway, sorry about that. All right, so anyway, we are looking for contacts. Now, let's say we're in the situation then, somebody buys a vehicle, all right? This is what I know specifically because 
I'm a VSMer, just like you. All right. Now, if you're not a total VSMer, you might not get this totally, but you're gonna. You'll understand at least. The person that just buys a car, this is what I know, is that a huge chunk of time that I spend with clients, I spend in stories. All right. So that's our first box. Stories. All right. Now those stories are stories that this client has shared with us. Now when they share stories, this is what they share stories on. They, stare, they, they share stories on work, on family, and on play. And play could be anything. Cool stuff they do. They like football games. They like to go snowmobiling. They surf as a family. They do traveling. They go down to Mexico. I don't know. Whatever it is. But the stories they tell have to do with one of these three things or a combination of those, right? Now, I know this, and so I think about this as I'm going through these stories. So as they tell me their stories, what do I do, right? I listen, review, I listen, review, listen, respond, right? I'm sorry. I listen, respond, I listen, review. Listen, respond, listen, review, all right? If you haven't heard me say that before, it's part of my training, but anyway, there you go. So I fully understand these stories that are told. So... After this is that, they already bought and all that stuff. It's not like I forget the stories. I already know them. So then what I do is that I want to connect to all these people that somehow attach to these stories that are told. Now, how do I do that? All right. Well, what I do is since there's a gap here, I now bring up the stories again. Right? And now I want them to elaborate a little bit more, and it's easy to do. I mean, this doesn't take a huge genius. There's nothing for me to write up on that. Because they told you a story. They can tell you a story about work. Oh, man, I've been working 12-hour shifts for the last four months, you know, six days a week, and I'm burned out, right? Now, that could lead to a whole bunch of questions, right? Or somebody starts telling you about, you know, they do Frisbee golf with their dog, and they're like the regional champions on it. Well, that's a great thing to pick up on, right? Or maybe uh, they, they uh, took a... Uh, you know, a, a surf trip to uh, the North Shore and, uh, and uh, they, uh, you know, they broke their leg on a reef out there or something like that. You know, I don't, you know, so anyway, but that can create a story. And then it's a story about somebody just, they were watching TV and then they saw a good friend of theirs on the cooking channel and they went to that story and they start telling you. Or that, that uh, at work they ran into the person who's in charge of the local hospital who turns out to be a great guy, and as it turns out, you know, he's always in suits and all that stuff, but what he really likes to do is he really likes to jump out of planes, right? So whatever it is, there's stories that are being told about people. And now it's our turn to start pulling these stories out. Now when we start pulling these stories out, now there's nothing more about cars. We don't need it to be about cars. Now it's just about people. And so when it's about people, then we start identifying names, of contacts and how your buyer relates to these contacts. All right, so let me just tell you what I mean by that. And this is exactly what I do. I don't want to, I don't sound like, I might write it like it's complicated, but it isn't complicated. All right, so I get the story. Let's just, you know, pick a random one. This is totally off the cuff. All right, so let's just say there's a work story about some guy that knows uh, this, the guy who's the hospital administrator who um, loves to jump out of airplanes, right? And uh, loves to free fall. Maybe he does some base jumping or something like that, too. I, and I don't care what it is. All right, so uh, this person tells you the story. He said, God, it was the craziest thing. I ran into this guy. He said, let's say this, this guy, the buyer, says, yeah, you know, I actually used to be a paratrooper. Uh, geez, you know, this is like 30 years ago or something like that. And uh, I'm in the hospital or something like that. And, and the administrator comes up to me because he's got something important to talk to me about. And it just as it turns out, we st it just goes into the story because I have a bad back. And I'm telling you I had a back back because I used to be a paratrooper. The guy says, oh, geez. The hospital administrator says, you know, I do some base jumping. You know, I've been jumping out of planes for the last 25 years, something like that. And I actually do some base jumping. And so we got into a conversation about this and and it looks like we jumped off a couple of the same bridges and things like that all right so when i hear that story i go oh my god that's nuts man 
Is that how in the world did you get to know this guy? What's his name anyway? Bill. Oh yeah, that's right. Bill, you know, Bill Chamberlain. Right? That's right. And he's a hospital administrator. And man, this dude does base jumping. That is crazy, man. I've seen some guys do that stuff with, you know, with squirrel suits and I mean all kinds of crazy stuff, right? And so, um, uh, so, so this guy continues on with the story about this, and I go, well, well, uh, God, I mean, I gotta meet that guy. I mean, I gotta tell you because I have, I have watched so much. You know, Jeb Corliss. If you don't know, Jeb Corliss is like, in my opinion, he's like the world's greatest base jumper and and squirrel suit uh, jumper flyer, really. I said, man, I've watched so many Jeb Corliss films and videos, man. I feel like I know the guy. I got to get to know this guy, man. I mean, how, you know, can, can I, yeah, just go, he's a great guy, you know. Yeah, just Bill. He said, if, if you want, the buyer says, if you want, I can introduce you to. And I go, man, I'd love that. You know, I mean, this guy ought to be cool. So what's the deal? Is it, is it so you guys just meet and you start talking about this thing? And, and then uh, how did it end? I mean, you know, well, we said that maybe we'll get together and have lunch. God, maybe we could all get together. Man, I'd love to just sit back and listen to you guys go back and forth. Now, listen to what I'm doing here. I'm engaging the conversation so that not only do I get to know the buyer uh, even better than I did already, now I start to get to know him on a personal level because we're not talking about cars anymore. That's all done. All right, we haven't had delivery, but he's in the middle. And now... We start talking about Bill, right? Bill, the hospital administrator, who's a base jumper, all right? And I go, now, man, I got to meet that guy. And then this is what happens. And I got to it happens all the time. All of a sudden, the stories get into other things, you know? Because I said, well, you know, I know that you said you got like three kids. Did, you know, didn't, did, they, did any of those guys, did they do base jumping or what? The guy said, nah, they do that. I said, my son, you know, he actually uh, is a uh, paralegal over at uh, Johnson and & Squibbs and so on and so forth. You go, man, you're kidding me. How did you get involved in that? Do you go to school for it? Now, pretty soon, I'm in conversations because I get to learn about now other things that I know. Now it's about the kid, right? So I've got names and contacts. So now I just picked up Bill at the hospital, Bill Chamberlain, right? And then I start talking about this, and then I get to one of his kids. He says, oh, yeah. And well, is it, what's his name? Is his, you know, is his name, let's say this guy's name is Cliff or something like that. Geez, Cliff, what's your son's name? Is his name Cliff, too? Nah. You know, that's Danny. All right, yeah, he's a paralegal. You know, he's a paralegal over Johnson Squibbs. A paralegal. Right, cool. How many kids do you have? And, 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 and you know, and I, you know, does your wife work? Or, all of a sudden, you know, I, we're in conversations about wherever it goes. And it's going to be one of these three. And so I just start picking up contacts. I said, man, if you don't mind, I'm just going to, because I'd love to meet cool people. I'd love to learn, you know, what they know about this. Or maybe it's, maybe I can connect with those people because maybe I'll be able to help them out. So maybe sometimes I'll go to Cliff and I say, geez, you know, at the hospital, if he wants, I'll just hook up to my database because if they need some help on there, I'll just tell everybody to go to the hospital and you know, whenever they need emergency and they can do this or whatever it is. You know, I don't know anything about hospitals. You know, but uh, but if I say, so, man, I could introduce my database, which is massive, and I'd be glad to do it just to interview them so we get some good press for the hospital. I, I don't know. It wouldn't cost anything. I wouldn't do anything. You didn't need to buy anything from me. I'd just love to do it, you know. And so... Now that I'm doing that, now I'm about giving. Because I want to give to all this guy's people. I want to give to Danny. And I want to give to Bill Chamberlain. And I want to give to his wife's church or whatever it is. And I'll tell him, gosh, what I could do for the church is we actually have a whole, you know, we've got a budget set up to where we can help promote some great uh, causes in town. And, man, I would love to do that, Cliff. It has nothing to do with cars or anything, but I'd love to be involved in something like that. He goes, yeah, call her up. It's Mary Ann. Mary Ann? Geez, well, what causes that? What church does she go to? Okay, do you follow what I'm doing here? All right, all I'm doing is I'm taking the stories that we already did, and I'm expanding on them now, and I'm getting contacts from these people. And guess what? I'm not going through any, anything tough at all. So I'll grab a pen. You know, I go, what? How, how do I get in contact with Bill, by the way, Cliff? I mean, you got, well, what's the best way to do? I text him, or I mean, what's the what's the thing? Should I just walk up to the hospital? That seems kind of funky. You know, I send him an email, or I mean, what do I, you know, what, what do, I do? And I'll ask Cliff, and Cliff will tell me exactly what. No, he said, I'll call him, I'll call him up for you. You head out there, and, and I don't don't take his number to see. I'll give him a call for you. And I said, do you mind if I follow up? Because I really want to meet this guy. Sure, no problem. 
You say, but here, Danny, go ahead and give him a jingle. You know, send him a text or something like that. And okay, great. Does he have an email, by the way? Okay, great. Because each of these people, what am I looking to get? I'm looking to get their contact information, which is either a text number, a phone number, you know, with permission. A phone might not be the same as text, likely is, but, you know, an email or an address about how to see him face to face. It could be a social network, but not so much, right? So it's something, something like this. this is what I want to get right here. Text, phone, email address, right? If, and and I, don't, I don't need the address for mailing. I need the address for, you know, where are they? Where's the building they work in or something like that, you know? So once I get that, now look where I am. And I do this with everybody. And I don't just do it with the people that buy. I do it with people that I meet. So all of a sudden, guess what I'm going to do when I start talking to Bill? Maybe we'll go for lunch or something like that. And I go, geez, Bill, you know, this Cliff guy, this guy's freaking crazy, man. Is it, he, this guy's a paratrooper, man. He said, I didn't think, oh, Bill, oh, yeah, that's unbelievable. You know, so how'd you end up meeting him? Well, he came in, and I'm in the middle of, you know, like 50 things. I got doctors coming in. I mean, I have the insurance people coming in. They go, my God, how do you manage that, Bill? Bill goes, eh, it's pretty tough. And I said, but, you know, I make sure I get home every night to my kids. And so, oh, how old are your kids? And pretty soon we start talking. Oh, yeah, well, my son plays golf at the local high school and stuff like that. He does. Man, I love golf. It's my favorite sport in the world. I said, how good is he? I mean, he's been playing. Oh, yeah, he's been playing a lot. I said, well, how's the team doing? I mean, do they got enough sponsorships and all that stuff? Because I already put some money away, and I could always sponsor things like golf bags or something like that. It has nothing to do with cars, Bill. I don't get nothing to do with it. Is it? But I love doing it to people that are good people that really deserve it, you know. And if it's a good school out there, then maybe I don't look into it because I'd like to. That's it. Nothing. No. No. You know. No. No. no you know. Quid pro. Uh, quid pro quo. Nothing. Of that stuff. Don't need it. So as I'm talking to Bill, what am I doing? I'm going deeper. So right here's me, and then here's Cliff who bought a car, and now he hooks me up with Bill, and then I get to hook up with who Bill knows, and you see how that works? And that's why it happens so fast, because it's so easy. Because like I said in the very first video, you know what all this is? This is what it's like being an adventurer, right? If you're a brawler fighter, you'll never want to do this, because once he bought, you thought you won and you're out. Have the kid, have the, the, you know, the minimum wage guys do the rest of the stuff. Not me. I get to know these people because the value on all of these people are the people they know because the people they know will ultimately lead me to who? The buyers. Do you understand? That's why you can do it right away. And so the last thing I'm going to tell you on this is that once you get all of their contact information and all this stuff, what do you do? You put them into your database, whatever that is. You might have your own database, and I believe you always ought to have at least your own database. Is that, or you, and or you put it into the CRM of the dealership. You put it in there, so then you start scheduling your way out to do other things. I can't get into all those pieces right now, but I will explain those sometime to you. So that is how you go from rejection to massive referrals. And the, with massive referrals comes what? That life full of balance and fun and honor and excitement and experience that you want as an adventurer and certainly as an adventure inside VSM. So anyway, I hope you dug it. I hope you, you, you're really getting all this stuff. For some reason, you, you, you want me to explain this more and stuff. I do have a new series coming out, and it is like the coolest series ever. I think you're going to love it. Um, I'm not really going to introduce it all right now, but... Uh, but it's coming really quick. It's called the weekly, uh, the weekly sales sessions, VSM weekly sales sessions, and it is super cool. You get, um, you'll get uh, if you want. I'm not saying that you need to. If you, if this is all you need, great. If you need poking in once every three or four months or something like that. But on this other thing, I get a brand new, fresh training video that I send to you every single week, and it is, it is so ridiculously dirt cheap. You know, it's I, I'll put it in the thing, but it is so so inexpensive it's just this tiny little amount that you pay on a monthly thing and i give you a ton of stuff not just training stuff but all kinds of my pdf docs and if you thought you'd be interested in that just keep it in mind because i'll i'll in fact i'll introduce it on the third video and then you can see if that's something that works for you if not it's no big deal you don't need to get any of that stuff but it is cool and i got i'm going to put a limited amount of people on because i'm going to do with this intro special intro price and all that 
stuff, which makes it even stupid cheap, you know. But but I just like getting people involved. And I like making uh, I like making an impact. And if you really dig this training, and you really feel like you get a lot out of it. I, what I do during all my training, I start tying in everything together. It's not just random pieces. It all ties in together so you can get to where you want to get to in the shortest period of time. Anyway, enough of that stuff. I hope you dug this. VSM, uh, Rejection to Referrals. Pay attention because that third video will be coming out pretty soon, the next day or so. And I hope you love that too. This is Tom. Good seeing you. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Adios.